Hey everybody, I do on AmpReparGuy.com here. Please like, share, and subscribe to my page. I'd really appreciate it. So, we have a Heathkit SP220, another one. This one was sent to me by Ham Radio Operator. He purchased it online. Has some serious issues. He, um, I explained all of the issues that I could see, and he wants to follow through with fixing it, so I'm going to. So, it has the metering board from Harbach. Awesome board. Filter cap board from Harbach. For some reason, all the diodes are cut. It'll still operate like that, but I don't know why he did that. I don't know what's up with that. But, um, transformer secondary. It's right here. I guess uh, it wasn't long enough, so he used the spade. A, uh, these terminals, I think it's called a speed. I never use these. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll cut that and I'll um, lengthen it, solder each shrink, put the proper insulation over it. So at some point it was dropped. It only had two screws in it. These two were missing, so obviously it didn't happen during shipping. Covers all sorts of messed up too. But he couldn't get the screws to go in, so he didn't put them in. Probably use a big C clamp, put a piece of steel across the top, and squeeze it back. The filament transformer is missing two screws for some reason, and the two that it, that are in it are not the same. One is a different type, so I'm hoping the filament transformer is okay. For some reason, he's not using the stock wire for the switch side of the uh, TR relay coil. Here's a piece of coax, shielded coax, and then for the LC wire, same thing, shielded coax, going to the LC RCA jack on the back, the funnel jack. Bias mods, uh, the bias mod has not been done, it's still the force bias. It looks, uh, appears he has that RL measures type parasitic stuff in here. It did not come with tubes. Um, you know, the grids are still lifted above ground. I'll ground the grids, get rid of the RL measure stuff. You know, that suggested kit. Fix the uh, filter cap board, lengthen the wire, like I said. Is that nichrome type wire here? Going from the plate blocker to the plate choke. I'll remove that. Put the stock strap back in. Glitch is placed in here. I'll remove that. Put the choke back over here. To the interlock setup. That's not touching. The cover off. So I'll remove this and bend it back and then put this back on so it's actually touching with the cover removed. The wiring was replaced between the input coils and the input rotary switch for some reason. One of the wires from the metering board appears to be um, twisted together and electrical taped. I'll fix that. The plates on the air variable on the plate side. It's hard to see, but they're, it had been arcing and they were um, pretty nasty. Metal, um, metal is, is melted and it's, it's, uh, they're thicker now, so the voltage rating of the cap has gone down because of that. I'll change the plate blocker to the new style like I always do. I'll put the glitch in here, replace the meter lamp bulbs. A lot of work, but. I will get it done. I guess the guy says he has a uh, replacement case. Replace this one. That's all beat the heck. So I will uh, remove these wire nuts and um, oh, uh, solder, heat shrink that, and zip tie it. Clean up some other solder work. I'll replace the cap for the. Rectified 90 volt winding. Make it nice, nice. So a lot of guys will just go in here and 
fix it. They won't do any of the beneficial modifications. You know, if you have a short on the B positive, the glitch resistor limits the fall current. It's so easy to do, you know, and with, when you have the self bias set up instead of the force bias, if you ever have a grid to cathode short, you won't take out the 90 volt winding on the transformer. If you do, then you need a new transformer. By grounding the grids, you increase the gain a bit and you increase the stability. So, um, you know, it's also wise to change the stock parasitic suppressors, you know. I, I, I reuse the same, well, I have a, a healthy supply of them, so I, I just use the same stock setup. You know, I just rewind new ones. So over time, they will shift value. So, um, you know, really not rocket science. Ever, I've done over 200 of them now, and I've yet to ever have any anyone complain um, about any of them. So, if you do it right, you spend a little bit of money in the beginning, you do it right, the thing will last the rest of your lifetime. Yeah, you know, so check the SU 239s to make sure that they have good a good connection to the PL 59 because a lot of times the the SO 239 center conductor pins will spread and you never want an open on the output because then the RF voltage will skyrocket on the output network. You can end up flashing a tube. So that's about it. If the uh Two Kenwood TL 922s. They're all done. Actually, that one did all the mods to it. Um, the switch for the multimeter was dirty, so I cleaned it. Yeah, I've seen other videos talking people with people talking about these things, bubbler circuit, whatever the case. But once again, I don't see the simple mods being done, like I just explained in this. You know, you know, the Harbach metering board has safety diodes for the meter. So, you know, you had a simple diode between the B negative and the ground, and now you, you're you protecting the play current meter. You know, you do the self bias instead of force bias, you're protecting the, the, transform, the filament transformer. Um, grounding the grids, the glitch resistor, uh, cleaning the contacts and the rotary switches. You know, that one over there, the, uh, there, there are two rotary switches for the output network. There's one that changes the changes the taps on the it's a progressively shortening switch which changes the taps for the output coils. Um, and then the other one adds padding capacitance when you go to 80 or 160 meters. It's a double sided switch for that portion of you know two rotary switches for that rotary switch. Um, one common connection is blown off and then the connection for 160 uh, both sides were damaged one was like gone on one side and the other side the where pinches the wafer they're fused together so the the wafer can even slide into it and then one side of the 80 meter contact was blown off so I don't I don't know what happened but um, you know, the customer purchased a new switch and I'm going to install it for him but besides that things working great he brought it to someone else and they told him, oh, it doesn't work because there's no high voltage. They wanted to buy it as a parts amp. And uh, I said, no, 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 don't do that. So he brought it here and um, it had high voltage. You could hear it on the higher voltage setting. You don't ever assume there is an high voltage. You know, you don't ever stick your hands in there. That is an interlock also, but you just don't ever assume because then you end up dying. But, um, You know, I heard it, and then I verified it with my fluke meter, and then I cleaned the rotary switch for the multimeter, and bam, meter worked fine. Meter lamps were out, so he just thought the thing was dead. He heard the fan, saw the tubes light up, and, you know, so uh, he was very grateful, because he almost got taken by someone else that works on amplifiers. But, um, so, alright, back to this thing. So I'll get to work on this on Monday. And I will shoot a second video when it's completed. So hopefully it won't need too much. I'm hoping that transformer's okay. For some reason it's missing the other two screws. Uh, it's weird. I don't know why. It doesn't look like 
It does not look like someone's unsoldered the leads before for the filament. Um, the secondary leads, the main secondary leads, they look like uh, that work looks original. You can tell someone's changed the cord for that solder work. It also did not have a plug on it, which is always a little scary, you know. And something doesn't have a plug or tubes or whatever, you know, it's it's always it raises red flags in my